Welcome, all you, our daily Timothy Time Saints. Thank you for, for logging on and uh, taking the time out. And also, welcome to anybody that's uh, new to this YouTube channel. Uh, you, you're most welcome to sit in and listen. And hopefully, this will be a nice time of edification for you. My name is Carl. I come from Pure Bible Study here in Trondheim in Norway. And uh, today is the 9th of January 2021 already. And uh, we're going to endeavor to look this year at the book of Daniel. So today is going to be lesson one. It's going to be very much of an introductory uh, style. Possibly maybe the, the, the first few times we get together looking at this book. We're going to, we, we, we're going to be uh, in the introduction phase. So uh, it's very interesting. So please uh, yeah, just uh, enjoy it. Take notes down also too in, 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 in way of announcements. If you are wanting the notes for, for each session that we have or, 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 or time we each teaching time, just uh, let me know. You can uh, leave a comment in the comment box below. Or if you are on the WhatsApp group, just give me a, send me a message and I will uh, email you the notes. So that's available for you. Um, let's open up in a word of prayer. But before we do that, please turn with me to Romans chapter 11. And uh, we'll go from there. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time that we can look into your infallible word. And we can, we can look at, the, at your word and we can, we can see what, what, what you're doing. Um, what's, going, what's really going on. And we can, we can make head and tail of that by understanding your, your word rightly divided. I pray that each and every person that listens into this message might uh, walk away with um, with some extra with some notes and uh, that they be Berean and search the scriptures if it's so. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, folks, what we're going to do here? Uh, I've asked you to turn to Romans chapter eleven. Now you might be thinking to yourself, aren't we studying the book of Daniel? Yes, we are. But um, there's a few things that I just want to bring to your attention. Okay. Jesus Christ, through the Apostle Paul, instructs us to study. Now, um, who's Paul? Some of you are new to, to looking at the Bible, reading the Bible, studying the Bible. So, like, who's Paul? Well, Paul, is, um, Paul is, is an apostle to the Gentiles. And if I take you to Romans chapter 11, 13, Paul writes this. Well, you just read it in the, in the immediate context uh, of, of, of the chapter. It... Uh, you, you, this is written to to this is a dispensational section of the book of Romans, but this verse in particular, Paul says, "For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office." So Paul holds the office to the Gentiles. Okay, so Paul is our apostle. Paul is if there's one apostle that you listen to in in the Bible today in this dispensation of grace, it's Paul. Paul wrote a number of different books. He wrote Romans right the way through to, his, uh, to, to Philemon. Those, those books are written by Paul for us. Uh, um, should I rather say to us today. So um, Paul, Paul instructs us to, uh, he's got an office. And Paul tells Timothy over in Second uh, uh, Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so when we rightly divide the word of truth, there's a few things. Uh, for those of you that are, are, are new to Bible study, um, the, when, when Paul says to rightly divide, what do you, if, if we know to com compare Scripture with Scripture, so just very briefly and very shortly, what you do is you compare verse with verse. So he tells us to rightly divide the word of truth. If you, if you carry on reading in Paul's epistles, he shows you how it all works out. You've got time past, you've got but now, and you've got the ages to come. Also, I think uh, um, possibly the, the, the biggest distinction in the Bible is the distinction between the prophetic program 
which has got to do with Israel. And the goal of the prophetic program is a kingdom. Okay, so you've got the prophetic program and what the Bible calls the mystery. Now, the mystery is a, is a, is a unit of information given to the Apostle Paul by the risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Paul got saved in Acts chapter 9, and that's when the body of Christ started. That's when Paul started receiving his messages. We know from internal evidence reading, reading the Pauline epistles that Paul got his messages not in one lump sum. He got it over a period of time. That's beautiful to study out, but for another time. So Paul's got an office. He tells us to rightly divide the word of truth. We now know that there's time past, but now in the ages to come. Um, now, if you know anything about the Apostle Paul and Paul's writing to us, uh, our doctrine is, is, is basically found in Romans to Philemon. But in the book of Romans, if you come over to chapter 15, Paul, tell, Paul mentions something. He says to us in, in verse 4, he says, for what so things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So just because we've got a block of information, 13 epistles from Romans to Philemon, it doesn't mean we leave everything out. We, the rest of the Bible is written to us. It's for our learning. You've, we've just heard what Paul's written there. Um, so it, it makes good sense to understand the prophetic program. You know, the Bible is, is, is a progressive revelation going along. We, we now understand that the mystery is the capstone of progressive revelation. Okay, so it's, it's very important. If we, if we are going to be, if, we, if, if we're going to understand the Bible, you know, it's, it's, all, you know, it's all good and well. Um, listening to the covenant theologians that... Uh, and the adherence to that system that go, oh, the whole Bible is written to you. It's all for you. It's all to you. It's all the promises are to you. All the covenants are to you, etc., etc. That's that's the um, you you're not you're going to get confused, and you're not going to get the profit out of the Word of God that you ought to get. So um, we need to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Now, I just want to say this: if if you want to understand what's you know we live in this time now you know it's 2021 um last year well, i don't have to mention anything about last year 2020 we've all lived through it we we've all got our version of it uh and uh, some of the time you hear people you know th there's talk of what is you know the there's um the mark of the beast and the one world government and you know there's lots of you know, you get all the conspiracy theories around and all that. You know, once you understand the book of Daniel, which we're going to endeavor to study through this year, let me tell you what, you know, when, when Paul says in Romans 15, uh, that it's for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, when we understand Daniel's, his, his, his prophetic book that he's got, or that he's written to the nation Israel, but we learn from it. Once we understand it, you know, there's so much comfort in it. Once you understand about the, uh, the tribulation period, we'll get a lot more into it later on, but uh, there's just so much comfort understanding the book of Daniel. Okay, but the first thing we need to realize is that Daniel is in the prophetic program. Okay, it's got to do with the nation Israel. Uh, as, we, as I introduce this book, we're going to see that Daniel writes about the times of the Gentiles. Okay, um, We'll, we'll cover that a bit more just now. But Daniel um, Daniel's going to help us under, understand a lot of things. Okay, so we need, to, we need to realize that Daniel, the book of Daniel is in the prophetic program. And um, the prophetic program is distinct from the mystery. The mystery being Paul's revelation. That being Romans through to Philemon. Okay. Now, why are we studying a book somewhere that's lost, when I say lost, why are we studying a book that's somewhere in the middle of the Bible called Daniel? Why, why Daniel? You know, there's a couple of different reasons why I've, I've mentioned to you now, uh, understanding the book of Daniel, we're going to get comfort from it. But, um, you know, think back to your, your, your Sunday school days. If, if, if you, right now, if I just say to you, whoever you are, what do you remember from the book of Daniel? And, and. I can't guarantee every time, but a lot of the time people will say 
Hey, there was a story about some a, a bunch of lions. Daniel was in lion's den, and and God stopped the the the, the lions never eat, never ate him up. And and uh, what was the other story? Then there's the one about um, a couple of a couple of young chaps get get thrown into a big fiery furnace, and lo and behold, they don't get burnt up, and you know God delivers them. And then, um, what else do you remember from from Daniel? And in, most people, and again, I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm just. This is a bit of a general statement, so allow me a little bit of wiggle room, please. Most people don't know much further than that. You know, the the, the basic Sunday school stuff. You know, um, just off the top of my head, you've got, you know, out there in the world, out there. In, in the secular world, we got that saying, you know, that the, the handwriting is on the wall, which means pretty much um, you're wrecked, you're over, buddy. Uh, you know, you read about that in the book of Daniel, and uh, we will cover that in quite a bit of depth when we get there, but um, you'll learn stuff like that. But more importantly, going through the book of Daniel, we're going to learn some things that, to be quite frank, you're not going to learn in any in most denominational systems. They're not going to teach you this. And uh, we'll get into why, okay? But um, we, while we're studying this book of Daniel, you know, there's there's a lot that we need to uh, we need to uh, uh, um, get from this book in our understanding and our frame of reference, so that when we when we we look out into what the Bible calls the ages to come, we can understand that in the ages to come, you've got the tribulation period, which we're going to learn about in Daniel. Which goes back to us being comforted, knowing that we're not going to be in the tribulation period. We're not going to be having to, uh, um, you know, flee into the mountains, you know, midway through the trip period. Uh, we won't have to worry about the the mark of the beast and getting a, a microchip in your in your pip, in your milli, your head, and in your wrist, or you know that type of. Thing. We we are the church, the body of Christ. That's if you saved. Uh, we'll be raptured out before that. So. If you get what I'm saying. Now, um, on that same thought pattern, we need to grow in an understanding uh, of, the, of, the, of the prophecy program for, here's just one more reason. You, you know, Paul, Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2.24, he writes, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. Now that's tough. I, I'll, I'll admit, that's tough. But uh, gentle, and, and, and the next part is the part that I, I want us to focus in on. Apt to teach, patient in meekness, uh, instructing those that oppose themselves. And, the, and verse 25 carries on. But what I want to show you there is apt to teach. You know, once you understand the book of Daniel and you've, you, you, you've got it, you, you understand what's going on in that prophetic program. You know, you you can you you could have buddies that are totally freaking out about. Hey, you know, look at the world where it's at. Look what's happened in the United States of America in recent days. Look what's happened in this country, that country, this country. And if you understand Daniel, which we will at the at the end of Daniel, you will have a, a functional, uh, intelligent understanding of the book. You can go, wow, okay, um, you, uh, dear friend, you need not worry because of this, this, and that, and you can. Be apt to teach. You can take them to the scripture and show them. Okay, now that's that's. I think that's very very important. Uh, also, to while we on this uh, on this this thought, there's a lot of confusion uh, out in Christendom, and uh, I'm just going to touch very briefly on a, on a few different topics. I'm not going to get into detail with them, but I'm just going to bring. I'm just going to raise some points here. Maybe you can. Maybe you'll go. Gee whiz, Carl. Amen. I can understand why you mention that. And um, perhaps later on we can we can deal with it. Number one is 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 um, you know there's some uh, body members. When I say body members, members of members in particular of the church, the body of Christ, other saved people, other Bible believers that may maybe have not um, studied out the doctrine of angels, for an example, and and, and they'll go. They've got no idea that uh, angels don't uh, intervene uh, for us today. The, I mean, there's a lot of Christians that, that would say, hey, you know, this, this angel does this for me, that angel does that, this, that, and the next trick. You know, and then um, uh, uh, they'll go, look, but look, it happened in the book of Daniel. Daniel got saved in the lion's den. The, the guys in the fiery furnace. 
uh, uh, the angel Gabriel came and 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 helped Daniel with his prayer, etc. Uh, etc. Et you know, that's all confusing stuff. So, um, you know, going through 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 Daniel and the way we're going to approach it and look at it, uh, you know, as we go through the book, we, we we will see some things about angels and we will talk about them to help your understanding that hey, today we don't need angels. We actually, we minister to angels. They don't minister to us. But we'll, we, we'll get there in time. Okay. And, uh, you know, then, then there's, again, once again, the, the whole confusion about Daniel's 70th week. You know, you, I remember being in the charismatic church a number of years ago. And um, I, there, there was one bloke uh, who actually, who, who was an author. He's written a number of different books. Um, uh, I had the opportunity of tu opportunity of touring Israel, Egypt, and Jordan with the brother, um, and uh, you know when he explained in his book, the, you know the, the the Daniel 70th week. You know if you if you haven't got a basic um, if foundation in the in the Word of God rightly divided, you're really going to battle to. It's just it'll be too technical for you, so. You know, we need to clear that. We need to clear that all up. You know, a lot of people look, you know, as soon as you start talking about the, the time of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period, seven years, three and a half years, two, 1,260 days, another 1,260 days, or 42 months, 42 months. You know, when you start uh, uh, um, sounding expensive like that, you know, people get gun shine and they, they kind of switch off. You know, and it and it doesn't need to be that way. So, during this time of learning the Book of Daniel, we're going to run through all that in in a in a very nice, neat, simplistic way that you will be able to get a piece of paper and draw it out for the the brother or sister that needs that help that comes to you for that help. So we're going to clear up that, and then then also too, I want to bring up uh, two more quick things here. Um, you get the R millennial position. Uh, we, uh, the book of Daniel will 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 fix that. Okay, um, if you don't know what what R millennialism is, I would uh, I'm going to leave that to you for your own personal study. Uh, um, look it up in a go to your pastor. Ask your pastor. Um, if you're unsure and you you don't know who to ask, send me a message and I'll and I'll help you with that. Um, also, uh, Petr Petrus Pet Petrus. I can't even pronounce the word. Uh, Peterism, you know, when they say that the prophecy, like R.C. Sproul, his idea is that uh, the prophetic program kind of came to an end at A.D. 70, and that's it. Preterism, I think it's called. I'm butchering that word. <laughs> if you go online, type in uh, uh, 70 A.D. and look at what the, the title for that is, you'll check it. Um, you know, so when we go through Daniel, we're going to clear up all that I hesitate to use the word malarkey, but all that confusion, we're going to iron that all out 100%. Also, another reason why, we, why we're why looking at uh, the book of Daniel is because Daniel is, is not a well-liked book amongst the scholars and the critics. Uh, where I live in this part of the part of the world where I live, and I say this next bit with, 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 with absolute respect, I say it with gentleness, um, I, I have some friends, or more associates, really, that um, that fellowship at a, at the, the Lutheran church down the road. I ha I happened in there a few times, and uh, I was in an English. Um, it was it was a Bible study, but it was more a, a religious social gathering than anything. Uh, and I say that with respect. If you know, if I, I really don't. I'm, I don't say that in a, a mean spirited way, but that's that's what it was. And um, the book of Daniel came up and, uh, you know, it's not a very well studied out book. People don't believe it. And we will cover the re a few reasons why. And um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a hated book. It's not a, it's not a well liked book because we will get, we'll get into that shortly. So that's another reason. And then uh, um, for me as a, as a Bible teacher, a young Bible teacher, when I when I, when I look out at my at, at ministry in general, you know, we my my job as a servant is to um, um, one of the many functions is to teach, is to be apt to teach, 
And I, 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 I look at my ministry. I look. Uh, I, I don't know who's listening in here. Perhaps no one is. Well, whoever is listening in, um, I, I, I wouldn't say it's my leading motivating factor. But having an understanding of the judgment seat of Christ. Now, before I carry on, the judgment seat of Christ has got nothing to do with losing your salvation. Okay. The judgment seat of Christ, every knee shall bow and confess. Okay. Now, that's not the Roman Catholic confession, right? It's not. But we will all give an account and there's... You know, um, your your conduct as a son, your ser your service as a servant, your suffering like a soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are your three general categories of uh, review that take place one on one. So, brother or sister listening, gentle listener, you will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ as a saved person and give an account of your of your saved life down here to the Lord. So. I look at um, one of the reasons why I've chosen Daniel is I, I am well aware of what the scripture teaches about the judgment seat of Christ. It is for the church, the body of Christ. Only saved people will go to the judgment seat of Christ. And it's a good thing. Okay, it's nothing to fear. It's not for the little flock, which is uh, um, the, the saved people. Uh, Jewish people that were under Peter, etc. It's not. It, it's got nothing to do with with the, with with that the kingdom, the Messianic kingdom church. Got nothing to do with those guys. It's all and only for the church, the body of Christ. So I come into the book of Daniel with that in the back of my mind because to teach somebody, to teach somebody to uh, um, to to get them stable. Obviously, we know that Romans is the first book you go to, but like we read earlier, it's important that as us as individual members in particular of the body of Christ, we need to have a, a functional, intelligent understanding of the rest of Scripture. And Daniel is a key book in the prophetic program for all of us to understand, which takes me to my last point in, my, in, uh, in this first section. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. Let me read this off to you. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The, based off the principle of that verse, I went through, uh, a faithful brother taught me the book of Daniel. And the, the, the layout of the 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 content of of the of grace school of the bible that i that that i studied through and uh the the layout of their curriculum if i can say it daniel was one of the first books we studied so based off the principle of 2 timothy 2 verse 2 i'm using that same template here because that was one of the first books that i studied and that it was <laughs> Um, I, I don't know how quite to explain it. Understanding Daniel was very, very important. And if I look to the at, at the, the president of Grace School of the Bible, the way he laid out what he taught, what he taught us, there, 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 there was a method that, that he had. And it, and it re I look back now and I'm just, I'm very thankful that I got, um, I never knew about Grace School of the Bible. Uh, brother Dan Cobb got me involved. He said, hey, why don't you, if you, you got all these millions of questions, why don't you just go to school? And uh, I said, oh, where'd I go? He said, why don't you try Grace School of the Bible? And I did. And uh, praise God for that. And uh, um, so I'm, I, I look at Grace School of the Bible. The way I got taught Daniel is the way I'm going to teach you, the gentle listener. So I, I bring that all up just in, just in, in, in a way of introduction. And uh, I want to now, I want to, I just want, with the remainder of the time we've got left here, I want to look at, at we're going to start to look at Daniel, the, the, the person, Daniel. There's a couple of things that we need to, um, we need to look at and <laughs> Daniel. Okay, let, how do I start this? The book of Daniel, 27th book in the canon of scripture. Okay, 12 chapters, 357 verses. 11,606 words. Now, 
if any of you have been tracking with the Our Daily Timothy Time, and I, 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 I know a lot of you have, last year, 2020, we did, um, in one of the series we covered last year, we, we each morning, we, uh, we, we had a reading plan, and uh, what I did was, was tally up the wording for the day, and then we, we put a, a reading value to it. For an example, uh, we worked off a, a reading rate of 150 words a minute, and and that's how we did it so if i look at eleven thousand six hundred and six words it'll take you just over an hour maybe an hour and 20 minutes at 150 words a minute to read through that okay i i would strongly suggest i i, I incite you please over the next few weeks um if you are not on the our daily timothy time uh whatsapp group please take the time to read daniel read it through a couple of times 12 chapters 357 verses um and and it's 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 actually a nice read uh it's important to read it as we're studying through we got you got to read it okay now each weekday morning what we do with our daily timothy time is is i'm endeavoring to read through the book with you the gentle listener so if you don't have access to a bible uh and you and you want or, or you want to hear it audibly each weekday morning on the WhatsApp group, we read. We are currently reading the Book of Daniel. Um, so, that's uh, that's some of the more technical stuff. Now, Daniel, the, the 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 meaning of the word Daniel is God is my judge, um, and you can further say that uh, the God who sets right what is wrong. Now, if you, an example of that, if you go over to Genesis chapter eighteen. Uh, Genesis chapter, in fact, let's just go there if you will. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, I'm almost there. There we go. Um, you're dealing with uh, Abraham and God are talking. And uh, verse 25, it says, That be far from thee to do. Now, please read it in, the, in your own time. Jot the, 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 the verse down and read it in the context, the, the immediate context. Okay. But verse, verse 25, none of this. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should should be as the wicked. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Okay. I mentioned that. I just put that in there. Uh, read that out and um, link that to Daniel's name. Okay. Now, Daniel was a real historical figure. Who lived at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon? Okay, um, come with me over to. Let's go to the book of Daniel. It seems as though we are studying the book, Daniel. Uh, okay, so so Daniel was a he, he was a real historical figure. He lived on earth. His two feet were on terra firma. Okay, he was a real character. Daniel chapter one. Let's just read a couple of uh, lines here. Um, uh, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoi Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Verse 3, And the king spake to Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured, and skilful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such has had ability, it's not has, such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that the end thereof they might stand before the king. Verse six. Now ver I, I, I've gone around the houses a bit here, but verse six. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Okay, so there you read about Daniel. So Daniel is a real figure. Okay, historical figure. Um, now, let's look a little bit further. 
how did the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, how did the Lord Jesus Christ view Daniel? Now, the reason we're going to get a little bit more into this a bit later. The reason why I'm mentioning this is, is there's there's the doubters, there's the, the scholars, there's the critics that, that are going to say, hey, you know what, hey, bro, Daniel, Ish, bro, I'm not too sure. Eh? They're going to put that seed of doubt in your mind. But just know, Daniel was a real figure, a real historical figure. Now, let's, well, let's read what Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said about Daniel. Now, isn't, would you not, is it not reasonable to think that if the Lord Jesus Christ acknowledged somebody, do you think that's a big deal? Do you think that means something? Or do you think, nah, you, know, you mentioned him, but uh, maybe it's just, uh, he wasn't serious. Now, if Jesus Christ mentions Daniel, you know that Daniel he, he was worth the mention. Come with me over to, uh, there's a couple of passages. Um, uh, we'll go, uh, let's go uh, Matthew 24 and Mark 13. Matthew 24 and Mark 13. Matthew 24, let's just see what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say. Uh, uh, 24 verse 15 and Mark chapter 13. 24 verse 15. Okay, so this is, um, now this is, this is Jesus speaking now. When, when ye therefore, in fact, let's go from verse 13, but, um, verse 13, but he shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Verse 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, Judea flee into the mountains. Okay, so Jesus Christ there mentions Daniel the prophet. Okay, that's one place. The other place I told you to go to is in Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. Uh, what verse is it? Mark 13. Verse 14. Uh, in fact, verse 13, Mark 13, 13, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay, another, um, it's, I want to take you to a couple more passages here. Ezekiel 14, if you will. Okay, so there, the Lord Jesus Christ has acknowledged Daniel the prophet. Okay, um, and what Daniel had to say, you know, that's quite important too. Ezekiel 14, if you will, verse 14. Um Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. There's Daniel mentioned again. Okay. Um, and then, for me, I think this next one is the kicker. This, this, uh, this is the one. I quite enjoy this one. Hebrews chapter 11, 33. Tell me if you can recognize who this, what's going on here. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11, 33, if you will. Hebrews 11, 33. Um, okay, so chapter 11, we're dealing with... It's, this is, uh, in my Bible, I've just written here from listening to other faithful men teaching me. Uh, the, this is the faith chapter. Uh, verse 33. Who th well, in fact, let's, um, let's go from verse 32 just to uh, thicken the source up a bit here. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, Jip of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, uh, kingdoms wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions. Now tell me something. Who, who do you think that's talking about? If you go back to Daniel chapter 6, you'll see. So, <laughs> Daniel was a real character. He was a real, he was, um, 
he was a real character, a real historic character. He was around, he lived. Okay. Now, Daniel was also a prophet. We've just also seen that uh, what Jesus said about Daniel the prophet. Now, when I, when I say prophet, I just want to bring this up. Just remember, prophets, this, you know, um, sometimes you'll get folks that are coming out of the charismatic movement and uh, etc. that they see the word prophet, prophecy, and it means a certain thing to their idea and their, their doctrinal statement, right? Just know this. It, 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 un, under that word prophet, you get a prophet that foretells something. That means they tell something beforehand. And then you get a prophet that foretells. For example, thus saith the Lord, so and so and so. Okay, you make something public. So, that, and so Daniel is a prophet. He's told us beforehand what will happen. Okay. Um, Daniel tells us of the of the times of the Gentiles, Israel's captivity and the transfer of power to the Gentiles, and also Israel's restoration. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now, another another thing about uh, about prophecy. Just just while we're here, the natural man can't handle prophecy. Now, what's the natural man? The natural man is somebody that's not saved. Uh, it, it, just to say it is as simple as I can. And um, a passage you might want to read is if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 14, it says, yeah, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So uh, yeah, the, um, he, he, he can't... Uh, the natural man, you know, Daniel was a prophet, he prophesied, okay. The natural man can't prophesy. Hence, he hates God having that authority over him. Daniel's prophesied, uh, um, you know, it's the times of the Gentiles, and man doesn't like that, okay. So, you know, here, I just, uh, in, in closing, looking at Daniel, Daniel, let, let's just put it this way. He was a historical character and he was a prophet. Okay. Uh, another point I want to bring up, uh, we'll continue with this next time. I look at the time and we're out of time for today. Um, Daniel had two contemporaries. He had Jeremiah and he had Ezekiel. Okay. Uh, now, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they, were, they, 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 were, they wrote to and about Israel where Daniel, as we're going to learn and see, he mainly or largely wrote to uh, about the Gentiles, okay, the times of the Gentiles. But we'll cover that a bit more in, in our introductory period as we go into uh, the study of the book of Daniel. Gentle listener, we've covered a fair amount of ground today, um, but this is just a, the, the, the very tip of the iceberg. We're very much in the introductory phase to the book. Uh, my, my idea is to go, uh, I don't want to rush through the book of Daniel. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ground to cover. There's going to be a lot of, uh, um, there'll be a lot of study involved there too. You know, the, what you're going to hear from, from this ministry about Daniel is you're going to have to put your, your play your part too. You're going to have to, you're going to have to study this material out and you know what? Some of it might be a little bit over your head, like, ooh, what, what just happened? But be patient. Don't fret. You know, if you don't get something, the beauty about having it on YouTube is you can go back and you can go back and you can go back and you can, and you can get it down. But um, I think we'll leave it at there for, for, for today. This, this is a nice little starter. Uh, you, have an, you, have, you, you now understand uh, a bit more about why we are studying a, a book situated in the middle of the bible and <laughs> called daniel and we've looked at uh, the basic nuts and bolts of the the book of daniel we've looked at uh very briefly about who daniel is and um how the i think most importantly how the lord jesus looked and thought about daniel i mean uh, the, we referenced a couple of passages there that is that's key okay Wherever you are uh, listening to this message, I just want to—I just want to say—I um, hope it's—I uh, hope it's been a, a an edifying short time we've had together today, 
and 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 also too, if you've just listened to this message and you you somehow been I wouldn't say forced, but by chance you've come across this and you've made it to this this far in the message. If you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, dying for your sins, your sins, your own personal sins, um, you know why not why not just give it some thought and and make that decision. It's not going to cost you anything. You don't need to get wet when I say wet. You don't need to get baptized. And Romans 6 is very clear about that. All you need to do is believe. You need to understand firstly that uh, uh, thanks to Adam, there, we have a sin nature. Before we, we, When God looks at an unsaved man, he, he's, um, he's just not... He's just not he, God's... Um, you, you, you need to be justified is what I'm trying to say and uh, but you need to realize that you are lost in your trip you know in fact while I'm, while I'm here Ephesians chapter 2 listen to this um, <coughs> uh, you as he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins so if you, you need to realize if you haven't trusted and if you don't rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross in his death he shed his blood on the cross in his burial, and he rose again the third day. You find that that's that's Paul's gospel, my gospel. You find that in First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen, three and four. If you haven't rested in the finished work of Jesus Christ uh, uh, and trusting and, and believing in that that He paid for your sins, you you are still what the what Scripture says, dead in your trespasses and sins. And if you died. You're not going to be present with the Lord and you will go to firstly hell and in the, later on in the ages to come. You, you'll end up at the great white throne judgment. That's, that's, that's not a place that any of us want to be. And you know what? All you've got to do to be saved. In fact, we're in Ephesians. A little bit further on down in the passage it says here. For, for by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. So all you've got to do is you've just you you've got to play your part. You've got to exercise saving faith, believing that Jesus died for you. And you can do that right now in the, in the quiet of your heart. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to do anything. All you need to do is you need to hear the gospel. You've just heard it. Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, was rose again the third day. And all you need to do is do your part and believe that. No more, no less. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you, oh, you need to get baptized too, because Romans 6 is very clear about that. You don't need to get wet, okay? You don't need to work for your salvation. You don't need to continue to work. Jesus Christ has done it all for you. There's nothing you and I could have ever have done to even come not even a millimeter closer or close to the glory of God. We all come short of the glory of God. Romans do yourself a favor. Read Romans chapter 1, chapter 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if you want that all in a nutshell, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 and 4. Just believe on Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Anyway, it's been great to be with you. I'm going to play a tune and uh, on the way out. And we'll catch up next week uh, for the next lesson in the book of Daniel. Wherever you are in the world, Maranatha. Thank you.